here in Belgrade, one of the most walkable cities in the world. Just come from Canada, so it's a nice change. Let's go explore the park that's right next to my apartment. One thing I'm loving here is that it's cafe culture. There are literally cafes lining every street. So here's another one, little coffee shop tucked away in the corner of the park here. Yeah, if there's one thing I've noticed so far is that Serbians know how to enjoy their leisure time. Parks are always filled with people in the middle of the workday. Right now is Tuesday at about 3 p.m. See how many people are just, you know, sitting in ben on, on benches, filling up the cafes. The same goes, I just came from a Starbucks nearby actually. Normally I'd work from a more local coffee shop, but yeah, they're all they were all filled, all the local ones, so the other thing you'll notice, well for me, was very obvious coming directly from Canada to Belgrade is the walkability and this goes for a lot of different cities in Europe and Latin America but the second you're out of North America where you need a car to go everywhere you're able to walk everywhere you go I haven't taken one uber since I've been here and I've been all over the city so one of the many benefits of choosing a highly walkable city It's like, I love visiting back home, but you need a car to do almost anything, to go anywhere, to visit any friends, to go to the store. There's just not options. And in my hometown, there's not, not even the option for Uber. So that's one thing I really enjoy about, for example, um, Medellin, where I've spent a lot of time, Belgrade, even more so. I'm really appreciating that. There's so many cool sites, parks, cafes, and everything within walking distance of my house. And my step counter is off the charts. <laughs> it's another little cafe restaurant here connected to the park. It's quite nice. So that's one thing I've gotten think about, thinking about after coming here is, you know, the ability when you live this type of Flaneur lifestyle, the ability to choose your destinations consciously and optimize for the things that are important to you. And for me, I value walkability, but for other people, it may be different type of infrastructure or taxes or some um, some people prefer weather I know we have the term snowbirds in Canada people who escape for the winter and go down to Florida Mexico 
that's another thing a lot of people like to optimize for. Me as well, to, a, to an extent, that's one reason I, I really like living in Latin America, is the weather is perfect year-round. But yeah, just having this concept of you can vote with your passport if you're not happy with your current situation. You're able to get up and you're able to create the life you want. You're able to create the lifestyle you want and live in the places that value you. commemorate the children that passed away in the NATO bombings right here in Serbia in 1999. That was a big, I remember growing up and seeing all of that on the news and it's quite interesting living here and seeing firsthand, you know, actually pass by a building, we might walk by it in a little bit but you can actually see one of the buildings that were bombed and it's still it's still left as is they didn't repair it another little cafe tucked away in another corner of the park a quick time check so it's three, 3.43. Serbians definitely know about, about how to chill. Like we can't get in there, but you can kind of see the view down below. Cool little stadium here. Got the outdoor fitness park here. Great spot to get an outdoor workout in and the, the weather is perfect right now for it. The temperature is probably, I would guess, 16, 17 right now. I'm gonna take a little detour this way. We'll take the, we'll take the scenic route. Um, but yeah, where I was going before in terms of optimizing your lifestyle, the, the owner of, um, Andrew Henderson from nomadic capitalist or nomad capitalist. Sorry. Um, he has a saying that I really like it's go where you're treated best. So I think we can apply that principle and choose the locations that, help us level up as people that value us. And for a lot of people, I think, thinking in terms of taxes, you know, where, where do people value you being a resident, you investing in the place you're living? What benefits do they get? What benefits do you get, sorry, for setting up your business in that country? 
and adding value by spending your money and living there. I think it can help to to write down a list of the things that you value as a person. So what would you ideally optimize for where you live now, where you're a resident now? What are the things that you don't like about it? And then just set aside a few hours to go and research online which places could help you optimize for those certain things. So for if it's weather, it's a lot more obvious. If it's, I think most people prefer sunny weather, not too hot and humid. I don't think it's too hard to optimize for weather. It's a lot more obvious where in the world you could go. Um, Medellin, Colombia for me is one of the best options because year round spring weather, it's my optimal weather all year round. Never gets cold unless there's like a, a cold front coming in or something. It's, or it's rainy season, it might rain in the afternoons for a month or two but the weather is always perfect. Rarely need a jacket and you can wear a t-shirt and pants every day. Or maybe for you it's taxes, so it's investigating where the territorial tax systems that you could take advantage of and set up a second residency. So for example, Panama has a tax system like that. Any money that you make living in Panama, you pay taxes on. But if your income is coming from elsewhere, that's not taxable income. Hong Kong has a similar setup. It's a little bit more complex. My first business was actually registered in Hong Kong, but it's worth looking into. Singapore as well, quite high cost of living, but some advantages there. I know a lot of people also opt to get second residencies in Malaysia. But it's just this idea of keeping your mind open and realizing that there are options out there. And then you start to find those options and slowly but surely you start to put together a lifestyle, a way of living that is more conducive to your goals, to what makes you happy and to what helps you level up as a person. So I was mentioning the NATO bombings. You can check out this building right there can see it on the corner they never restored it there's a few buildings in the city just like this so imagine not many more than 20 years ago bombing took place right here So for me, when I'm traveling, I'm always keeping an eye out, trying to learn from the different cultures, try to explore deeply, connect authentically, figure out which types of places that I like. You're always kind of evaluating because everywhere in the world is an option for you. So for me, I'm, I'm loving Serbia so far. I'm glad that I've come and spent as much time as I have here and still have quite a bit of time here getting a proper feel and yeah just imagining myself living here you're kind of doing a trial run when you stay in a place for a month
What a beautiful church, wow. So we made it across the park. I'm gonna head back home, but yeah, just keep that top of mind. You can optimize your life. You can choose any location in the world where you want to go. Are you living in the place where you want to be?